your second online music class, I'm a Steger. Last week we explored the percussion family. These are instruments that you hit, scrape, or shake to make a sound. Thank you to everyone who shared pictures or videos of their homemade drums. It was so nice to see your faces and also to see all the amazing instruments you were able to make. This week we will be exploring the woodwind family. So think flute, clarinet, bassoon, saxophone, instruments like that. Or one that we use a lot in music class, the recorder. Now, before we actually make our instrument, we're gonna talk about how woodwinds work. Now, in order for a woodwind to make a sound, you blow into it. Now, if there is a lot of air in it, the instrument will make a low pitch. Take this long straw, for example. It's long, so there's lots of air inside it, so it'll make a low sound. That had a low pitch, right? But if I had a short straw, there's not very much air inside it, that's gonna make a high pitch, just like this. So long straw means lots of air, makes a low pitch. Short straw, not very much air, makes a high pitch. So today we're going to be making a pan flute. So as you can see, five straws going from long to short. The long straw makes a, sh a low pitch, but as they get shorter, the pitch gets higher. So this is what you'll need for today's activity. For this activity, you will need straws, at least five of them. You can use thin, thick, paper, plastic, doesn't matter. You need a pair of scissors, a felt pen or Sharpie, a ruler, some construction paper or cardstock, or regular paper will work too, and some tape. Now, double-sided is easiest, but I'll show you how to use masking tape or scotch tape if you don't have that. All right, so first thing we need to do is choose five straws. Right now, your straws are all the same length. That means they're all going to have the same pitch, but we want our pan flute to go from low to high. So we're gonna cut our straws to different lengths so that we get that to happen. So set out your straws. You should also have your felt pen and your ruler ready. Now, the first one, we don't need to cut at all. This is gonna be our lowest pitch. The second straw, though, we are going to cut. So take your ruler, put it next to the bottom of your straw, and from the bottom, we're going to measure three centimeters and then mark it with our pen. So you can see I took my pen and with, with it, I measured three centimeters from the bottom of my straw and I drew a little line. For the next straw, we're going to measure a mark at five centimeters from the bottom. So I'm gonna mark right about here. So you can see my straw. And if I took the ruler and I showed it to you, it should be about five centimeters. Sorry, I know it's hard to see. The next one, you're going to measure six centimeters from the bottom. So six centimeters from the bottom on your fourth straw. And your fifth straw is going to be 7.5 or seven and a half centimeters from the bottom of your straw. All right, so you should have one straw with no mark, one straw with a mark three centimeters from the bottom, like this, then a straw with five centimeters from the bottom, six centimeters from the bottom, and 7.5 centimeters from the bottom. So now you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut each straw at the mark. Now be careful because the straws tend to go flying like that when you cut them. So take a moment now and cut all your straws to the right lengths. So once you've done that, you should have your straws and they should look something like this, already starting to look like a pan flute. So the next step is you're going to take your cardstock and imagine if you were to spread out your straws a little bit from each other, just a little bit, you're gonna take your paper and cut a length about the length of your straws with some space in between. I think kind of like the shape or size of a bookmark. You can play around with different sizes. It doesn't really make a difference. So I have my first rectangle. Looks like it will fit all my straws. Now I do need two of them. So I'm gonna put this one back on top of my paper and I'm gonna cut a second one the same size. There we go. 
So now I have two paper rectangles about the same size. If you want now, you can decorate one of them, but one of them you need to leave blank because we're going to be writing something on it later. But if you are not going to decorate it, we can continue. So start by taking your double-sided tape and you're going to pull a piece about the length of your paper. Then you're going to put it in the middle just like this. Now, if you don't have double-sided tape, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'll show you how we can do that. Take masking tape, or you can use scotch tape too. You're going to need to take a piece that is as long as your paper two times. So one time, then I'm gonna keep going, and the length a second time. So I should have a long piece of tape. I'm going to make it into a loop by connecting the two ends like this. And now I have a circle. Kind of like when you want to hang something up, right? You would do this. Okay, so I'm going to put that on my piece of paper. Okay, looks like that. So now I'm going to take my straws and I'm going to place them on the paper with the top of the straw at the top of the paper. Now, if you're doing masking tape or scotch tape, you will then need to take a short piece of tape and put it in between your straw, right next to it, kind of like this. That'll just keep the straw from wiggling around. Then you put your next straw, which should be the second longest straw. And again, a small piece of tape beside it. So you can see I'm gonna repeat this with all of my straws each time the straws are getting longer, or sorry, shorter. Now, if you are using double-sided tape, you can completely stick, skip this step. You would just put your straws on and they would stick. You don't need to put the tape in between. Okay, so then, you take your second piece, which also has a piece of tape on it, and you put it on top like this, and you press gently to make the straw stick to the tape. Okay, there you have it. You have a pan flute. Now, the next step is to number your straws from one to five, because that is gonna allow us to write songs after this. So one, for your longest straw, two, three, four, and five. And there you go. You've made your very own pan flute. All right, have you made your pan flute? Then you're ready for the second part of this activity. We're going to be doing a composing exercise. Composing means you're going to be writing your own music. So I've included a worksheet. Should look something like this, a bunch of squares, but your squares will be empty because you're going to be writing your own song, filling them in. So the way it works is you read it from left to right. And in each box, you write the straw that you're going to be blowing into. So in this song, you would blow into straw three, then two, then one, two, three, three, three. And I've used the line to show kind of a rest or a breath. So this song would sound like this. So as you can see, that's a very familiar song and I was able to play it on my pan flute. Now, if you don't have a printer and you still wanna write a song, don't worry, you can just grab a piece of paper and write your song, your um, notes on the bottom. So you could write, for example, mm, I think one, one, five, five, four, four, three. I wonder what that would sound like. Let's play it and see. There you go, you've written a song. Now, if you want to get really creative, you could include some rhythms. So I could go, hmm, I want it to be T T T T T T top. Let's see if I like how that sounds. Sounds like the beginning of a song, doesn't it? So really you can get as creative as you want with this. Please include a title because that just makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, I hope you will share a video or a picture of you playing your pan flute and any songs that you've written in the comment section. I really wanna see how creative you can get with this. 
So take care, and I'll see you next week.